John chapter 15, 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remained in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that, so that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. There's now a very big collection of things on this uh, Thing. I'm just going to remove some of them, bear with. Oh, lovely. There we go. Oh, that's going to annoy me. Right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So, first of all, I don't know how I'm going to follow um, that, so bear with me. I think we've got new, uh, new youth... Uh, sermon people ready and waiting to take up the post. Um, but for those of you who remember last week, you might recognise the Bible um, passage that Tara's just read for us. So that's kind of part of the passage that Phil spoke on last week, but you've got part two um, today with me. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Kate um, and I'm part of the youth, so went to Oasis this year, um, youth team and part of the worship team as well. Now, let me start by saying just how much I love this topic. I love friends and friendship. Um, and in a culture where often kind of weddings and marriage can be seen as like the biggest like achievement, now don't get me wrong, I love a wedding, I love marriage and all of that kind of stuff. But we forget about and we don't talk about um, just how vital and important um, true, deep and meaningful friendships are to our lives. And just as Phil said yesterday, or yeah, yesterday, last week, they're worth celebrating just as much as weddings and marriages are. So as today, we're going to look um, at what God's done in our youth ministry. And as we looked at Oasis, I'm so glad that beyond Oasis, you guys in the youth and back there um, have some wonderful, joyful, supportive and fun-filled friendships between you. And I want you to take a moment just to recognise what a blessing that is to you. And I love watching your friendships grow between you. Now, I read Phil Knox's book, that one, um, while I was away at the start of the year um, on various playing journeys when I didn't have much else to do but just sit. Um, and I'd seen one of Matt's Facebook posts about it. And I was like, that kind of is a book that is for me. And it was the quickest I have ever read a book. And I'm not a fast reader. I'm a very slow reader. And I love the way it explained so simply and clearly how our creator God created friendships, designed them and reflected them in his own life. Now, as the youth were so vulnerable and encouraging with their testimonies, I wanted to share a recent testimony that linked to this theme of friendships. This testimony shows just how intentional I believe that God is in this space, in helping us to develop friendships in our own lives. Now, there was a period of time just a few years back when I was really struggling being at church. I didn't feel that I had much of a community, and Phil spoke about last week in the kind of the dwell session, just how much community means to people in a church. And being one of the few around my age group, I was really struggling to come and kind of know where I fitted, other than kind of in my serving role. And I didn't have many Christian friendships that were outside of the church either. So I began to pray. I was like, if God is a God of friendship, then I'm going to pray for friendship and friends. And this is what I did. And actually, I saw so clearly God start to answer my prayers. 
New people began joining SBC who became friends. I made friends at the church weekend away. I, my school friends live, became a Christian and has been attending SBC. And along with our other friend, Jasmine, who amazingly is here today, which is also such a blessing, um, who normally joins us online. And actually at work, I made friends with people and they weren't just colleagues anymore. And this was such a blessing to have these kind of friendships become into my life. Now I have friends where one moment I can be discussing if I've ever seen a baby pigeon, um, to which the answer is no. And I've also worked out I've never seen a baby squirrel. Um, but then in the next moment, we'll start talking about our prayer life and processing how we pray and the struggles that we're facing. And this is what God designed friendships to be. A beautiful blend of joy and fun and deep and relational with an element of vulnerability at times. This to say that if you're hoping for friendships, struggling with friendships, and this sermon series just feels a bit like, what's this all about? Then start to pray because he's so intentional in this space. Now, when we look at friendships in the world, we can see different types displayed from those on TV to celebrities. So we've got Rachel and Monica and the whole cast of friends. We've got SpongeBob and Patrick. We've got Anton Deck. We've got Sam and Frodo from Lord of the Rings, which I've never watched, but I think I may have read it once. Um, and we've got Taylor Swift and Selena Gomez. We've got Buzz Lightyear and Woody. And my favorite, we've got Winnie the Pooh and Piglet. Now in all of these types of friendships, we see great support for one another. Ups and downs, but generally friendships that have stood the test of time. But what makes a friendship so special? And how do we learn from Jesus as a friend? Now the passage that Tara's just read for us comes as part of Jesus' final instructions and advice the night before he was crucified. It comes just after the vine part um, that Phil spoke about last week, about how we should remain in God, connected in order to bear much fruit. Now, verse 12 to 13 says this, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus showed his love for us by dying on a cross, carrying the weight of our sins and dying in our place. That is a love of friendship that is sacrificial and unconditional. Now, maybe we can't love in the same way that Jesus loved. We can't sacrifice ourselves and as a result, get rid of someone's sin. But we are called to love and build friendships where the spirit of love and the motivation of love is the same as Jesus's, sacrificial. Now, when Jesus died on a cross for us, I'm sure it didn't feel good in the moment. But he knew that that's what was required for friendship and a relationship with us. I wonder if you only do things for your friends, when it feels good for you, or when you get something out of it. I've left my prop. Please may I pass me my prop? There's my prop. So, for those of you that don't know, I work for Cadbury's. So, that's the people that make these kind of chocolate bars and all the other kind of chocolate bars. As a result, I get a lot of chocolate. This was free, didn't have to pay for it, rarely ever pay for chocolate anymore. But if my friends were only friends with me because I could give them this chocolate bar, if I only ever gave Zoe chocolate and that was her main motivation, then I'm not sure that it would be the best friendship. If she was only friends with me because she could get free chocolate or cheaper chocolate, then what would happen if I lost my job or no longer gave her chocolate anymore? then maybe she wouldn't be friends with me anymore. But I'd like to think that our friendship was more than just receiving something off the other person. So think about your friendships. What is your motivation? And do you love one another to get something in return? Or do you love as a result of wanting to reflect Jesus' love for us? Now the youth, you can share this chocolate bar afterwards because I don't need it anymore. So, I need my flip chart too. Should have probably moved all of this at the start. Vaguely everybody see it there? Probably not. There we go. Now, God in his friendships 
was a vulnerable person. He was a vulnerable leader in his friendships with other people. Now, often, we can have people over here. You can tell I didn't do art. And you can have people over here. Now, there may be people you know, or sometimes they might be friends. But between them, there's a big divide. And actually, having this divide might just be a case of you never talk about things that are troubling you, or you never think about the hard stuff. It might be a very kind of surface-level friendship where everything's good and everything's jolly. But actually, being vulnerable with each other closes the gap. Being vulnerable allows openness and communication between people, and it allows people into the spaces that we may not have shared before. Are you all right? Um, and it opens ourselves up. If we think that all our friends have it all together, then we run the risk of building bridges between us and a lack of authenticity. We need to be willing to be vulnerable to create deeper friendships. So what Jesus did, he's got a very long body, was laid down in the gap for us. And actually, when he laid down, for Jesus it was physical, it was a sacrifice, but actually, when we lay down in the gap and we say to our friends, I'm struggling with this, or this is hard, that vulnerability opens an invitation for the other person to communicate back. And suddenly we go from a surface level to a deeper level of friendship. Now, a word of caution with this. I'm not suggesting that you have the same level of friendship with everybody, where every friend you open fully up in everything and be super vulnerable. In fact, as uh, Phil shared with us last week, Jesus had different circles of friends. He had a few close friendships where he was able to do this level of vulnerability. But I suggest that in order to do friendships well, or a few friendships really well, we need to start laying down in the gap and being vulnerable with each other. Maybe that's just the best friend in the inner circle, but it's so important to have this kind of friendship with at least a few of our friends. We are called to show love to our friends in the same way that God did to us. Spiritual friendship is not about what we're going to get, not about going to get the chocolate bar, but rather it's about what we're going to give to someone else. It's unconditional and doesn't depend on a return. Yes, of course, we want a friendly response, but our hand of friendship is given freely and lovingly, despite whether the other person gives back so much or not. So how do we lay down our lives for our friends if we're unlikely to be in a position where we physically sacrifice our own for theirs, as Jesus did? It may look like sacrificing the time we had set aside for something really fun that we're looking forward to in order to help a friend in their time of need. It may look like delaying something that we had planned in order to be a listening ear for a friend who needs to talk. And actually, how well do we listen? Listening's not about having an answer planned, ready in your head to return. Listening's just about letting the other person speak. It might look like using our money to support a friend. It may look like putting our friend's needs before our own or supporting a friend in a tough task. Now, Jonathan and David in the Bible had friendship that showed this sacrificial love. Each put the other's needs before their own when the tough got going and when it was hard, but they had a beautiful friendship that put God's kingdom first. Now, God designed friendship, and he also designed our bodies. So there's no surprise when I read how much the whole body benefits when we have these kind of sacrificial friendships like the one I mentioned. In fact, ah, oh, there we go. Our blood pressure is lower when we talk to a supportive friend rather than one that we're just on the surface with. Our heart rate is lower when we complete a tough task with a friend by our side. Situations we judge to be a lot more manageable when accompanied by a friend. And whilst those three are physical benefits, there are also mental benefits from boosting our happiness and reducing stress to a reduction in depression and just increased endorphins from all the laughter that you might have with a friendship. So actually, while God designed friendships, he designed our bodies as well. 
And verse 15 says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. And with this one verse, Jesus shows that we're no longer slaves or servants, but we're invited into his inner group of friends for a deeper relationship with the Heavenly Father as he shares more with us. As God's love and knowledge passed down to Jesus Christ, he is choosing in turn to pass them down and uses the vine, just as the vine passes life down through its branches, we are in turn called to pass the word of God and our love to our friendships as we follow Jesus' example. And in the verses before, God calls us to remain in him, for he is the vine and we are the branches. But what does that look like to remain in him amongst our friendships with other people? Now, I don't know about you, but friendships are tough at times. And growing up, especially as a female, I'd say I had my fair share of friendship fallouts and issues throughout secondary school. Just part of life, unfortunately, and growing and learning. And into adulthood, it looked less like fallouts and more like growing apart with other friends or actually having to support friends through really tough times. And whatever it might be, friendships can be hard work at times. But God calls us to remain in him. And for me, this looks like when friendships get a bit messy or a bit tough, relying on him and his strength and connecting to him to be the source of our love, which then enables us to pour out into our friendships when they get a bit tough. And God wants us to build those friendships that are more than surface level and that go into being sacrificial. Now, I'd like to say that it's really easy, but just like any relationship, those of you that are married probably know this, it takes time, compassion, energy, effort, forgiveness, empathy, kindness, and vulnerability. And actually, that means that it's an active thing to choose to be a good friend. We must be active in the act active in the actions, tongue twister, um, that we do in order to show love to one another and build a long-lasting Christ-centered friendship. Despite the cost that actually friendships can be, the blessings of these kind of friendships I have found far outweigh the cost of them. Now, I heard a best man speech at a wedding where the best man shared how a shift happened in their friendship between the best man and the groom when they started to go to church together for the first time. And the best man realized that they were no longer just friends who went out together and did the fun things, but they now had something a lot more meaningful and deeper to connect and talk about. When we connect on a deeper level, our friendships are enriched and become more joyful and a blessing to us. But this teaching isn't just about friendships between Christians. It's applicable to all friendships, whether that's at school, work, groups we attend in the week, and where our friends may not be Christians. But during a time where friendship in society can look a lot like being friends on social media, we are called to that sacrificial love within all our friendships. And Jesus did this. So how do we do friendships with one another? And how we do that is a witness to our faith and to Jesus' love. Now, one of the parts of Oasis that I do love is joining together with all the other churches, different to our own, and watching the young people form friendships with different people, who perhaps are different to them. Different church backgrounds, different family background situations, different cultures, different interests. But they involve each other and encourage each other. And they don't just do that to people who are like them. They do that across the board and involve them in games and activities and this is a true acting out of what it means to form unlikely friendships and show the world just how God loves. And now, my friend at work recently gave me a card and a snippet of it read, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for being there for me over the last six months. You were always there to listen when I needed it and it was so appreciated. Your kindness meant so much. Now, this is a friend who isn't a Christian, but she knows that I am. And I was able to regularly share that I was praying for her and that my prayer is that she sees a snippet of God through this. Now, the actions I took and the way that I behaved in supporting her in what she was going through, what she's had done, is because of the phrase, what would Jesus do? Of course, I'd got work to do. 
I'd got deadlines to hit. But actually, to her, it meant more that I sat and listened than, I don't know, I made sure that a chocolate bar got out on time. That could happen later. I'd make that time up another time. But listening and supporting her, not judging or projecting my thoughts and feelings onto her, meant that it made the difference. And that is a challenge, and it's a challenge that I take daily. But may we all take this as a challenge in how we do friendships with one another. It's sacrificial and not easy. Now, before the service last week, Phil prayed that we may be a church full of people that others notice something different in because of the way that we treat each other, because of the way that we do friendships. May we reflect the best of God's friendship to us with each other and the way that we react. And to come into close, Proverbs 18 verses 24 says, in this is the message version, friends come and go, but a true friend sticks by you like family. What a joy and a blessing it is to have friends that are like family. It's often a phrase used that says, friends are chosen family. Maybe, may we be a church full of friendships that are part of the family of God inside and outside of church. And God shows us the best of friendship and how we can follow his own examples and how we can follow his example in our own friendships with each other. The servant-hearted acts and sacrificial love, as well as the vulnerability and deeper connections, more than just surface-level friends. And now, as I end this sermon, and before we head into a time of communion, a phrase that was used um, a couple of weeks back where I was, was about using the Holy Spirit highlighter pen, and actually asking the Holy Spirit to highlight to us, in whatever we'd just heard, what we needed to stick, and what was challenging us. So I'm just going to pray now to end that the Holy Spirit will come and highlight um, one or two things from what I've just shared um, that you can put into action or begin to kind of be challenged about this week. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much that you reflect all types of friendship um, to us. We thank you that you reflect the sacrificial love, the vulnerability and the fun and the joy and the laughter. And I just pray that we may be a church that can reflect that in our own friendships. But I just pray now that you'll just come and highlight a few things, um, to me included, that we can take away from this. We're all continuing to learn and grow um, and develop in our friendships over this series. So I just pray that you'll highlight something that we can take away. And I pray for Amanda now as she comes and leads us in communion. May we just take this as a time to reflect on our own friendships in life. Maybe that's a challenge that we've got within our friendship. Maybe that's just reflecting on the pure joy that they are and thanking you for them. We thank you for amazing friendships and what a blessing they are. Amen.